So what do you guys want to be when you grow up? Okay. A teacher? Wow. Yes? When I grow up. Okay, when you want to grow up? A pilot. A pilot? Oh my gosh. Life in a refugee camp, these are a few things you got to know. First, we don't want pity. That's like going off temporary feelings and emotion and that instinct for somebody to feel bad for you. What we want is to be invited to the conversation. Think of solutions for me long term, whether that's education, whether that's simple accommodations like bath or water, like those simple necessities, like think of ways that we can have that. I did not remember it being this big. I'm Halima Azan and I'm a black Muslim Somali American from Kenya, but also being a refugee from Kakuma. This is where I spent the first seven years of my life. My biggest fear was just not being able to recognize the place that I called home for seven years. I kind of prepared myself for the worst. I'm known for being the first high fashion hijab wearing model. It was important that I wore my hijab for the Miss Minnesota pageant only because that's, that's my whole point. It's like you don't have to conform, you don't have to take off your scarf. If you want to wear it and it's your choice, feel free to do it. If you don't want to wear it, same. You know, like it's, it's always comes down to choice. Letting people live the kind of life they want to live. This is the first time I'm coming back to Africa. This is the first time I'm coming back to Kenya. And definitely my first time going back to Kakuma. Welcome to Kakuma I feel really guilty sometimes. I think, okay, did I make the most out of my journey to America? Did I make the most out of my life? I know millions of other people, other girls my age, they got to stay behind, you know, they got to live their lives out here. And I escaped, I made it out. The Kakuma refugee camp is home to 185,000 refugees uh, from 14 different war-torn countries who found refuge here. My family's originally from Somalia. Their journey from Kismayo, Somalia to Kenya took my family about 12 days on foot. <laughs> so it was not an easy one. Halima's family uh, felt that they had no choice to protect their family, to protect themselves, but to flee to Kenya like many other Somalis and seek refuge in a refugee camp. So that's what they did. Um, they fled for their lives. This is where I was born, yes. Goodness. That means my birth certificate would still be here. We're here! Oh my goodness. Wow. Are you gonna play? Yes. Okay, I wanna play. Team first. <laughs> Who's on which team? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we are needed. Okay. You guys got lucky. I'm needed. So we're here in Kakuma One, and I just got to school the boys on how to play basketball. Do you see? <laughs> I want to be an advocate for refugees. I want to share my story. I want them to like be able to feel like they can go and do anything that they put their mind to. Thank 
Kakuma is one of our missions where we help young people, the refugees in the camp. We have electrical, masonry and dressmaking. The dressmaking? Yes, yes. Tailoring? That's right. Yay! Zero I was we just looking dressing. at the girls. How long have you lived here? We are here for eight years. Wow. Do you know if you're leaving soon or no? Not yet. What? Are you planning on moving or no? Staying? We are still here. We're still here. When I spoke to that girl and I asked her if she knew if she was going to move out and she said no, she's still here, I had to think deeply about that because we looked about the same age but she has a baby already and to like not know where your future is or to live in that limbo, I can't even imagine how that feels. I want to see if the teachers got better because I think we never got past the letter E. When we went to school every day, it was like one, two, three, A, B, C. It's a beginner. That's just the beginner level. We never got past that. So where's the school? The secondary school. This is where I have a diploma, guys. Oh my gosh. bit about the work that UNICEF is currently doing in Kakuma. UNICEF with UNHCR partners mm -hmm. really supports all schools in Kakuma refugee camp. Mm -hmm. So what that means is teacher training, any supplies that you see here, whether that's textbooks or recreational activities, and then helping to build infrastructures or tents for safe learning. I'm so happy to be back. I'm so excited to see Kakuma and I'm so proud of you guys. <laughs> So what do you guys want to be when you grow up? Okay. A teacher? Wow. Yes? Okay, when do you want to grow up? A pilot? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I'm, I really miss coming here. Assalamu alaikum, how are you guys? Swahili gi, like zero. Okay, I know. <laughs> oh my goodness. They notice how my Somali isn't the best, so <laughs> they're giving me a little bit of a hard time. When we were in the other school, there was a note that was attached to like the board, and it was I see, I forget, I hear, I don't remember, I do, I always get it done. So that's, that's what I'm going to leave you guys with. I was trying so hard to like take notes at the school because I want to be able to like come back five years from now and the kids to have maybe instead of the chalk maybe they have like a classroom monitor you know or maybe they even have like um, iPads you know to learn for education. People from Somalia, people from South Sudan, very often they have to walk to escape their country. And depending on the roads, often there are roadblocks. The trip out of the country is almost as dangerous as what they were fleeing from. So roadblocks, militias along the way, um, sometimes it takes them weeks to, to get out. And once they arrive in Kenya, though, they're, at least they're safe. The vetting process literally took us years, you know, lots of ups and downs. The U.S. has the most rigorous security screening system of any country that resettles refugees in the world. I consider myself and my family very, very lucky. We got to relocate and settle in America and really have the opportunity to just flourish, you know. Today, um, it's very unlikely that Halima would get to America because of the travel ban. When Somalia was put on the travel ban, that really broke my heart, only because I know that the people that come from there, like they come and they add so much to the community, like you can't tell me any different. There are a number of refugees here that we had identified and submitted to the United States. There were also many who the United States had already screened and they were actually ready to go. So there's a lot of disappointed refugees here.
Tereska Kuma camp is the first Tere event taking place in a refugee camp, but it's more than that because it features many young refugees as speakers. The rehearsals, um, maybe let's not talk about it. <laughs> let's not bring back the trauma. No, the rehearsals went great yesterday. It's important to have Alima here because she's an example and, and she's a role model for her stance on wearing her hijab, being herself. Uh, deciding her options in life and many young refugees look to people like her uh, as examples and role models. Imagine being born right here in Kukuma camp, then growing up a Muslim, immigrant, African girl in America, and going on to become an international fashion model. Please welcome to the stage the inspirational Halima Adam. But the sense of community that is here in Kakuma and the pride that everyone here possesses is simply unparalleled. I was the first Muslim homecoming queen at my high school, the first Somali student senator at my college, and the first hijab wearing woman in many places, like the Miss Minnesota USA beauty pageant, the runways of Milan in New York fashion weeks, and even on the historic cover of British Vogue. As you can see, I'm not afraid to be the first, to step out on my own, to take risks and seek change because that's what being a minority is about. It's about using yourself as a vessel to create change and being a human representation for the power of diversity. And now I use my platform to spread an important message of acceptance. My story began right here in Kakuma Refugee Camp, a place of hope. incredible to live in America. I feel so blessed um, to be a citizen. I think we're among the luckiest people in the world. I'm contributing as I should, as every American should, to the country and that's my proudest feeling is being a taxpayer. That, that sense of pride comes from being a refugee because finally I feel like I'm contributing to this country that hosted me, to this country that has given me so much. I always feel like it doesn't matter where you started, the whole goal is to get to where you want to be. So think of life in that light. And even let's say you're in a refugee camp, there's a lot of, a lot of opportunities. I would say we were good together. I would say we had fun. How would you feel if I told you that you've become a UNICEF ambassador? <gasps> Stop! What? Stop! <laughs> Everything that's good in life always comes.